Good day guys. So this is Exam Bonan speaking. I'll be discussing about Wayek Animal Osmanji Practical Specimens. I made this video specially for my students so you guys will be able to prepare beforehand. So your exam will just be a walkover with or without our examination assistance. You should be able to pass Animal Osmanji Practical Specimens. So please make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. You like our video and as well you can comment on your views. If you have questions about each any specimen, please ask your question via the comment section. I'll be replying your messages actively. So let's identify all the specimens one after the other. We'll be starting with what specimen A. So specimen A is woody feed trough. Specimen B, plastic cylindrical feeder. Specimen C, chicken wire mesh. Specimen D, day old chic life. That means an alive day old chic specimen E, coal pot. Specimen F, electric bulb. Specimen G, leather. Specimen H, African giant land snail. Specimen I, distilled water labeled. Your teacher will label that in the examination or they will label the specimens. Specimen J, testis. Testis of ruminant animal. A ruminant animal is an animal that has a stomach with four compartments. Specimen K, knapsack sprayer. Specimen L, palm kernel cake. Specimen M, plantain peel. Specimen M, ear so we are going to be discussing this specimen one after the other in details. So we are going to touch as many places as possible. I will not be able to cover everything. I will make sure I talk on every specimen, the vital places of each specimen. So let's start with specimen A, wooden feed trough. What is a feed trough? A feed trough is a container that is used to feed animals. Most times it does not have cover. So you just open and you put the farmer will put the feeds into the container. Why we are calling it feed? Feed is what we refer to as animal food. When we are talking about human being, we call our what? Our own what? Food. But in terms of animal, we call it what? Feed. So, specimen A is woody feed trough. Specimen B, plastic cylindrical feeder. Please permit me to discuss these two specimens together. Because the reason why why I arrange them one after the other is because they want to relate these specimens together. They may ask you the differences between these specimens, the similarities, the function of the specimen, or animals that are used to feed, that feed with any of these containers, or let's say these feed troughs. So let's discuss the differences between specimen A and specimen B. In the exam, you might be using the word specimen A. So you say specimen A is a woody feed trough and is usually brown in color. While specimen B can be found in different color. If you have a specific cylindrical feeder in the examination hall, most times the feeder we have in poultry is what color white and it has a what a round base. So the differences between the two is that specimen A is brown in color, while specimen B is what can be found in different colors. So another difference is that another difference is that woody feed trough is more durable. That means it lasts longer than what specimen A. Specimen A is more durable than what specimen B. Why specimen B is what is less durable. Plastic can break if the animal jump on it or it's if the farmer miss and do the specimen B. That means the plastic cylindrical feeder. You will see that it is. The woody is more durable than it in terms of what in lasting and how strong it is. So that is one difference. Specimen A woody feed trough is more durable than specimen B. Another difference is that specimen B is used mostly to hold feeds. You cannot using woody feed trough to hold water is not realistic. You understand what you call wood. You know water can destroy wood. So woody feed trough is usually is mostly used to hold feeds. Why the plastic cylindrical feeder is used to what? Mostly hold what? It can be used to hold what? Feed or water. Any of the two, it goes that way. So let's talk about the description of specimen A. So specimen A is a long narrow container. It's really long and narrow and it does not have a lid. When I mean it does not have a lid, it does not have a cover. So that is specimen A. Why the description of specimen B is that specimen B is used to hold plastic and water and you understand that this we have already specified it as what it is cylindrical so that is one of the description of specimen b you can read more on their description of each specimen based on what type of feeder you are giving in the examination or when you're talking about the description you should also add the words the color of the specimen that means the color of the feeder so let's move to the next one there 
that is what the uses of this feeder uses of feeder so one we use feeder in order to keep passage clear and clear that means the passage of the animals instead of it to be sprinkling the or spraying the food on the ground we what we organize the animal farm properly by what putting the feed in what in the feed trough or in the plastic cylindrical feeder so one uses of the feeder is what keep passage clean and clear another uses of feeder is what it makes feeding of the animals what quicker and more convenient if you spray grains on the ground for the chicken the chicken will be picking them what one after the other but if it is inside the feeder they can even swallow two feeds at the same time that means it shows that it's what feeding is convenient for them and quicker so another function or uses of feeder is that what it encourages the animal to eat the whole diet it encourages animals to eat the whole diet mix mix so another function or uses of these feeders is it keeps animal food clean and within reach you know once you have dropped your food on the floor it's no longer clean it's, it's, it has already been contaminated but if it is organized in the feeder it works it will help the animal to what to eat healthy it keeps their food clean and within reach so that is all on specimen a and specimen b so i've talked about the functions and uses of specimen a and b the functions apply to both specimens actually that applies to both specimens so those uses i gave to you just now you can use it for specimen a and you can also use it for what specimen b we have talked about we have identified the specimen i've talked about their description we have talked about their differences their similarities is that both of them are used to what feed animals so that is that then moving on to the next specimen that is what chicken wire mesh we all know what chicken wire mesh is chicken wire mesh is this wire they used to contain animals in a cage you know that iron net let me use the word iron net so you understand chicken wire mesh is that iron net you used to cage your live chicken at home or your turkeys your beds is mostly used for beds so chicken wire mesh they have even indicated it as well chicken wire mesh so let's talk about the functions of this chicken wire mesh it is what it keeps the beds contained and prevent them from straying or roaming about you know we have different systems of rearing animal we have closed system and it is you guys are animals but you should, you should know all those also that function of that chicken wire mesh is that it's what it prevents the bed from straying away and it keeps the bed what contained in the cage. Another function of the chicken wire mesh is that it protects bed from predators. It protects the bed from predators. You know, predate what are the predators of beds? Your chicks, you know, anytime the hawk or eagles are flying, you know that the mother hen will have to what protect the chicks. So if those chicks are inside the chicken wire mesh, they are what? They are protected from their what predators which are the what the eagle and hawks so examples of birds that are contained in chicken wire mesh are the chicken the turkey and etc as long as it's a bird bird can be contained in chicken wire mesh we have many other birds we have um, the parrot and co so the next specimen over there is the coal pots coal pots so that is specimen e coal pot i'm skipping specimen d they old chic i will still come back to that if time permits i will still come back to that so i want to skip specimen d that is the day old live chic so that they would live chic most of the things they can ask you there is probably they can ask you that what are the adaptive features of the day old chic that means they can ask you that what is the function of the feather on the chic you know a newborn chic or a day old chic rather we call it day old chic not newborn chic a day old chic we have scanty feathers and what are the function of those feathers? Those feathers are used to regulate its body temperature. So they are used to regulate its body temperature. They are used to beautify the chicken. They are used to also what? Protect the chicken. The chicken, the chicken use it for what? For defense. So those are the functions of the feather. There are many other functions of feather. They also use it to what? To fly. If it is a big bird. So the next specimen there is cold pot. So let's talk about cold pots. So what is the function of cold pot? Cold pot is a tool used in poultry. It is used in poultry, so it is a tool. Let me use the word tool. So coal pot is a tool used in poultry. As the name implies, they will put coal inside and they will use the word to generate heat in poultry. So what is the description of this coal pot? Coal pot resembles a traditional cooking pot. It has an opening to fill up with coals and it is made up of metal. So as the name implies, it is a pot, so definitely it must be made up in metal. 
So in your examination, although we surprise, this cold pot is, is, is very rare. Let me use the word it is rare. So they might not provide you with cold pot. They might provide you with the diagram of a cold pot. So what are the uses of cold pots in poultry? I've said that cold pot is a tool used in poultry. So what are the uses, the functions of this cold pot? So cold pot can be used to keep the day old chicks warm. So I told you they put coal inside just to generate heat in poultry. So they are used to what? To keep the day old chick warm. So day old chick is our what? Specimen D. So they can ask you that what is the relationship between specimen D and specimen E? So specimen E is used to keep what? Specimen D what? Warm. So it releases heat, conventional heat. So in your secondary school, we are talking about most of heat transfer in physics. We have radiation, we have convection, and we also have conduction. But yet we are saying that it releases it releases it through what? It releases conventional heat. That means what? Through hair. So the next specimen we have is electric bulb. So electric bulb. So mostly that electric bulb, the com most common electric bulb is what? Lead lights. Usually made up of what? Of lead lights. So what are the uses of this electric bulb? So electric bulb. You guys know what is ele what electric bulb is. You have electric bulb in your house. What is it for? What for lightning? So it is used in the poultry farm to keep the chicks or bed active and alert. So one of the function or uses of electric bulb is what it used to keep beds in poultry what active and alert. So another function is that it improves the health of the beds. So it improves the health of the beds. Another one is that it improves their mobility. How can the beds? You no, know, most times it's not a new thing. Chicks, chicken, they cannot move in the dark. They are unlike the owls and the bats that they are what? They are night animals. But you see the chicken or our poultry beds, they cannot move in the night. So at night, that bulb will be or that electric bulb will be of what? Better function. It will improve their what? Their mobility for feeding. So you know most times they feed chicken what? Day and night. So it helps in their mobility and for what? And for feeding. So the next specimen there is um is leather we have leather there so what are the functions of leather we are going to discuss the economic importance of leather where leather is gotten from and co so what is leather so how why is this leather gotten leather is from animals it's from the heights and skin of animals so it is a product of animals product primarily from their what from their heights and skin so examples of this examples of animals you can get your leather from is cattle, goat, sheep, and ram. Irrespective of whether it is a female goat or male goat, you can get your leather from what? From both either female animal or what? Or male animal. As long as it is what? It has hide and skin, which is what? Cattle, goat, sheep, and ram. So economic importance or uses or function, whichever way asks you. If they ask you economic importance, if they ask you function, if they ask you uses of leather, your answer will be what? Number one, clothing. Number two, footwear. Number three, function furnitures. Number four, tools. Number five, sports equipment. So whichever question you are asked, if it is either function or uses or economic importance of leather, I'm giving you the answer. Another economic importance of leather is source of income to the farmer. So it's a source of income to the farmer. It is used in production of sport equipment, it is used in production of farm tools or tools in other different aspects of life. It is used in production of furniture, the sofas you have in your house, your leather shear, they are made from what? The hides and skin of animals. So your footwear, some of you wear leather shoes, so they are made from the leather gotten from this animal. The next specimen there is African giant land snail. African giant land snail. We all know what snail is. Most of you eat snails. Some don't eat snails. Either you're allergic. Some people might say they're allergic to snail, or they don't like eating the animal. Maybe because of religion or any other thing. Let's get back straight to you. the main points we're having here. So, you know, if we're talking about plants, we're talking about what botanical name. But since this is an animal, we will not say it is a botanical name. We'll call it what zoological name. So, what is the zoological name of African? Giant land snail. The zoological name is Lisa Chantina fulica. Lisa Chantina fulica. You can check up the name on Google, or I will also give you the name at the end of this lecture. 
I will type it in the comment section the zoological name of giant land's name. So what is the terre what is the habitat of giant land's name? The habitat is what terrestrial habitat. What is the phylum? You know, if you are talking about plants, talk about what division. But since we are talking about animal, we say it's what the phylum. The phylum means what mollusca, mm -hmm. the kingdom, kingdom animalia, and the class of land snail is what gastropoda, gastropoda. So the next specimen we are going to discuss is specimen I distilled water. So according to Jay, we say that it's going to be what labeled. So they will label it for you as well as distilled water. So what is the economic importance of water to animals or economic importance for specimen I to animals? Number one is that it is essential or we can say it is important for all metabolic processes. Number two is that temperature regulation. When you are feeling it and you take water, water in your body what? Water in the body, in the blood, you know the body is composed of mostly water, the higher percentage in animal body I don't let me not guess, but according to your knowledge in animal husband, you would have told you that water contains more percentage portion of the animal body. So that's water in your body or your blood. It helps to what regulate your body temperature. So or we are now we are talking about animal. We are talking about animal husband, we are not talking about human beings. So we say what it regulates the what animal body temperature. So Another function or economic importance or uses of water is in animals is that it is used to keep the farm environment clean. It eliminates waste from the body of animals. You know, we talk about excretion. Excretion is what? Elimination of waste product. Waste product is usually what? Urine. So your feces is not a waste product. Feces is not a waste product. It is what? Urine. So water helps to what? Eliminate waste product from the body of animals. Then my last the last function with me here is what it helps the reproductive system of animals to function properly so it helps the reproductive system of animals to function properly something just came up to my, my mind as i was discussing the previous specimen specimen h i did not talk about the function sorry so please put it down function of the or let me say the economic importance of snail or your giant Afri african giant land snail is what Number one is that it contributes to calcium, contributes calcium and other nutrients essential to the production of snails and nuclei. So another importance of snail is that it helps in recycling of nutrients. Another importance of snail, economic importance of snail is that it is a source of food to man. Another importance of snail is that it is a source of income to farmers. Another importance of snail is that it is economic importance. This one now is economic importance, or you can say adverse effects. When I talk about economic importance, we are talking about both the positive uses and the negative uses. But when you ask you uses or something, you are only going to talk about what the positive aspect. But when you ask function, you are going to only talk about the what the positive aspect. But when you talk about economic importance, you are going to talk about what both the negative and the what the positive aspect of that specimen. So economic, another economic importance of snail is that it, it destroys the leaves of plants in the farm. So it destroys the leaves of plants. So we are going to be moving to the next specimen, specimen J, testis. Testis of what? Of ruminant animal. Most of all these secondary school boys, when they are joking with each other, they will call testis what? Eggmon. In Yoruba, we call it what? Eggmon. But I don't know how they call it in Igbo. Maybe somebody should help us to type the Igbo pronounce the Igbo meaning of testis. The word testis is called in Igbo in the comment section. And also the Aousa should also what type the meaning of testis in Aousa. So let's get down straight to the point. What what is a ruminant animal? A ruminant animal is an animal that has a four compartment stomach. Stomach. When we talk about compartment of stomach, we have the abomasum, the rumen, and two other parts let me not mention them or should i say i can't remember vividly but if i remember i will tell you before the end of the video so functions of testes we have what number one production of male garments what is male garments spermatozoa so some people can say production of male garments another person can say what production of spermatozoa you guys are saying the same function another function of the testes is secretion of rep of reproductive hormones you know testes is found in male animals specifically i'm going to repeat myself now 
testis is found in the male animal. So if you are asked in the exam, which animal list three animals that possesses testis? Don't go and be mentioning goats. Don't go and be mentioning sheep. Don't go and be mentioning cattle. What you will say is what? Bull. Instead of you to say cattle, you say what? Male cattle or you say what? Bull. Instead of you to say goat, instead of you to say goat, you say what? Billy goat or you say what? Buck. Buck is the name for what? For male goat. Instead of you to say sheep, you say what? Ram. Ram is what? Male sheep. So those are the examples of animals with testes. Then now let's talk about the description of testes. Testes is a sac like organ. I hope you guys are jotting down the point. If you are not jotting down this point, I beseech you, my brethren, please replay this video from the beginning and start jotting down this point. Because what you write down is what stick down to your memory. Back to testes. So, as I was saying, the description of testes. Testes is a sac like organ suspended beneath the body. Why is testes usually suspended beneath the body? This is suspended beneath the body because of the testis produces spermatozoa at a lower temperature, a te temperature lower than the body, lower than the body temperature, lower than the body normal temperature. That is why even in human beings, the testis is what suspended below the body, so that the testis will assume a temperature that is slightly lower than the body temperature. So that is why it is suspended beneath the body of animals. Then, we'll, another thing, another function, you know, I initially I told you that function of testes is what production of male garment or spermatozoa, secretion of reproductive hormones, e.g. testosterone. Another function of testes is produ production of oestrogen. Some of you will be wondering that what, why is testes producing oestrogen? Oestrogen is a female hormone. Yes, males also secrete oestrogen, but in very what, minute quantity. So that is not a major function, I'm just adding it. So when they ask you two functions of testes, don't mention test oestrogen. Major oestrogen is the last function. When is your last choice? Your major function of testes is what? Number one is what production of male gamete, that is spermatozoa, production of what? Of male hormones, production of reproductive hormone, which is what? Testosterone. So the next function we have is what? The knapsack sprayer. In Yoruba, some people call it what fuke fuke. You know those NASA prayers, they hang it on their back. Those farmers, when they want to spray grass, not only when they are spraying, not only farmers that use NASA prayers, some other people use NASA prayers in all these football fields when they want to spray grass that are very long, long and diverse and in different fields and diverse like that. So, NASA prayer. Let's start with the description of the NASA prayer. So, the NASA prayer is made up of plastic, it's usually made up of plastic. And it has a pipe conducting or connecting the handheld nozzle. Nozzle is that mouth where the spray is coming out from. So it has a pipe connecting the nozzle to the what? To the reservoir or the plastic tank. You know, it's a plastic tank you hang on your back. You wear it like that. So the description of NASA pair is like it's made up of plastic. It has a pipe connecting the handheld nozzle to the small tank or reservoir. It has a handle for hanging on the back. It has an opening that can be closed after putting the fluid in the reservoir. What are the functions of NASAC sprayer? NASAC sprayer is used in what? In spraying insecticide and pesticide, number one. It is used in spraying insecticides and pesticides, number two. It is used in spraying fungicides. Fungicides are chemicals that are used to kill fungi and other fungi related organisms. So, another function of NASAC sprayer is used in irrigation. When you're talking about irrigation, watering of plants, spraying of water in farm, so you can also use your NASA sprayer to also what to spray water on the farmland to water your plants, or you say what irrigation. As a professional animal husbandry student, you will say what irrigation. So it's, NASA sprayer is using what irrigation of what of farmland. Another very important function of NASA sprayer is what application of liquid fertilizer. So NASA sprayer is using the what application of what of liquid fertilizer another function of nasa sprayer is what is used is what spraying of herbicides spraying of herbicides so i'll be moving to another subtopic under that nasa sprayer this one is what precautions precautions of what of nasa sprayer what are the precautions of nasa sprayer 
Number one, do not use it under what? A windy weather or rainy conditions. So when rain is falling, you don't use knapsack sprayer. When the weather is windy, that means when breeze is blowing. When there is wind, you don't use what your what your nasal spray. So one precaution is what do not use under windy days or rainy condition. Number two, nasal spray um, precaution under nasal spray is what wash hand and body after you. So after using your nasal spray, you have to wash your hand and wash your body after use. So the, when you mean body is what the body of the what of the nasal sprayer and also your body too. If at all it has splashed on your body. The chemical or liquid you are spraying. So another precaution of using nasal sprayer is what wear protective covering. You can wear your overall shirt while using the nasal sprayer overall, so so that any liquid or any harmful chemical will not drop on your body. You have to protect your body from what from the chemicals. So another precaution: ensure that there are no leakage in the system. Make sure that the tank or reservoir of the chemical is not leaking, is not leaking, the pipe is not leaking, and other things are also in what's in place. Do not eat, another precaution, do not eat or drink while when operating. Some of you eat like Ojeju. You people like food too much. Nothing in the bedroom you'll be eating. In the when you are in class, you'll be eating. I'm very sure if you are a farmer, you also be what you'll be eating during your farm. But when the, one of the precautions of this NASA spray is that what you should not eat and drink while using the what the knapsack sprayer. So another precaution is that avoid walking on freshly sprayed sprayed plots. So after spraying your fertilizer on your farmland, don't walk in between the farmland because those chemicals are still fresh there. After spraying your insecticide and herbicide on the farmland, don't walk in between the what the farmland. So another precaution. Of it, of the nasal spray is never blow to clear block nozzle. Some of you, when you want to pour fuel inside your um, inside your generator, you carry pipe, you connect it to the container. You now put the other pipe inside the generator. Don't do it again. Stop that. So you put your mouth inside the pipe. You you use your mouth and suck it, and you quickly put it like that. I beg you, in the name of God, when you are now a professional, those of you that are going to study. Animal Advantage University that we call professional millionaire farmers. Please, when using your knapsack sprayer, don't use your mouth to clear. If the pipe is blocked, don't use your mouth to unblock it by blowing breeze or any hair inside. So never blow to clear blocked nozzle with the mouth. Then the last precaution I have for you: keep the nozzle close to the ground. To prevent spray drift or body contact. When we say spray drift, you know, if you are spraying it up, wind can blow the liquid and it will go into the direction you don't want it can splash on your body. So when you are using your knapsack sprayer, make sure that the nozzle, that means the mouth where the liquid is coming out from, when you are spraying, where the spray is coming out from, you keep it close to the ground to avoid drift, spray drift or body contact. So now this natural sphere, there are a lot of points and questions under this natural sphere. There are other many questions on other specimens. I don't just want to waste your time on watching video. I'm not saying it's wasting your time, but I don't want to some students they get tired after listening to a long video. So now let's talk about protective devices. How can you protect yourself when you are using the knapsack sprayer? So you can call it what protective waste or protective devices. Number one is what your boots. You wear boots while you're what? Using your knapsack sprayer. Number two is what? Hand gloves. So you wear hand gloves while using knapsack sprayer. Number three is what? Goggles. That means glasses or face shield or nose mask. Any of them shall make sure you protect your what? Your face. Then the fourth protective way is what? Respirators. Respirators. Then the fifth is what? Impermeable overalls. What do you mean by impermeable? Impermeable means that something cannot penetrate. Liquid cannot penetrate through your clothes. You know, there are different types of clothes. If you wear all these cotton dresses, liquid can penetrate in their permeable overalls. But if it is a rubber overall or, or rubber overall, water cannot pass through rubber, it cannot pass through plastic. You understand what I'm saying now? Your raincoat. Those of you when you're in primary school, your parents bought you raincoat. That raincoat is a what? Is an impermeable overall. So, Napsa spray out to be at their own type of what? Impermeable overalls. Then the last one is what plastic cap. 
they will specify here in words what plastic cap. The reason why they say plastic cap is because it's plastic cap is what is impermeable. Then problems that may result from poorly maintained specimen key. What are the challenges? The problems, the impediments that can result from improper handling of knapsack sprayer or poorly maintained what knapsack sprayer specimen kit. Number one is clogging of nozzles. Number two is what leaking of pressure chamber. Number three is leakage of chemical from tank. Number four is punctured nose. Number five is cross contamination can occur if not washed after use. So if you do not wash your knapsack spray after use, you use it to spray fertilizer or use it to spray herbicide. When you are spraying fertilizer, herbicide will enjoy with what the fertilizer and it can kill the plant that you want to fertilize, that you want to apply fertilizer to. So that is very very important. Let me take the problems that may result from poorly maintained specimen K all over again. Clogging of nozzles, leakage of pressure chamber, leakage of chemical from tank, punctured nose and cross contamination can occur if not washed after use. So I'm done with explanation of specimen K. I'll be moving to the next specimen, palm kernel cake. Palm kernel cake. Palm kernel cake is made from palm oil palm plants. So what is the botanical name of oil palm fruit? Oil palm fruit. The botanical name is Eliasis guinnessis. E L A E I S. Then guinnessis. G U I I N E E N S I S. So the botanical name of oil palm is Eliasis guinnessis. So what are the uses of palm kernel cake? So palm kernel cake is an animal feed. I already told you in the beginning of this video that feed is for what animal why food is for what for man so an importance or uses of palm panic feed is the number one it is used in feeding fattening and dairy cows it's used to feed fattening and dairy cows number two function or uses of palm panic cake is used it is used in feeding winning pigs feeding winning pigs number three function is used in feeding lactating goats lactating goats Goat that has, young goat that are seen sucking the breast of the female goat. So, what is palm kernel cake? Palm kernel cake is a byproduct of oil extracted from palm fruits or palm nuts or oil palm nuts or oil palm fruits. So, it is the byproduct. It's a byproduct. We prepare it from what? From oil palm or oil palm fruits or oil palm nuts. What, whichever way you want to say. So. I will give you an assignment. Go and learn the preparation of this palm kernel cake. I'm very sure your teacher must have given you guys in your practical notes. They must have held classes for you people on this animal advantage practical. Or your notes in your class. There's no how your lecturers will not, or your teachers will not take you on animal feeds. On the various animal feeds. You know we have other animal feeds. We have an nut cake. We have different animal feeds in animal advantage and agricultural science. So what are the economic importance of Palm kernel cake. Number one, it is a source of fat and oil in animal feed. Number two, it is a source of income to the farmer. Number three, it is important in feeding, lactating, and weaning of young animals. It is important in lactating and weaning of young animals. So you can search on Google for more functions of palm kernel cake or more economic importance of palm kernel cake to animals. I'll be rounding up soon. The second to the last specimen, or you can say the penultimate specimen, we have the plantain pills. So, what is the botanical name of plantain? It's called what? Musa sapientum. We have different species of plantain. So, let's just say Musa species. You write it as what? Musa M U B capital letter. They have taught you guys how to write botanical name as a logical name. So, when you're writing the Botanical name, the first name that is the Musa, the first letter will be what in capital letter. Why the other letters will be what small letter. And in the species that is SP dot will be what small letter. The species name will be what in small letter and short. So Musa SP. Musa M in capital letter, USA in small letter, then S then space, then SP. SP is what? Small letter then dots. 
So, what are the economic importance of plantain peels? It is a good source of protein to the animal feed. It is a source of fiber to animals, that means it helps in their intestinal regulation. Then, another economic importance of plantain is that it is a source of income to the farmer. So, farm animals that feed on plantain peels, what, what are the animals? What are the type of animals? What are the examples of animals that feed on plantain peels? We have number one snails. That snail is specimen H. We have fishes, catfish. Example is catfish. If there are examples of farm animals, you have to be specific. You have to mention. That is what I told you about. That test is. You have to be specific and you specify the male animals. Don't just call the general name of animals. Same thing when you are talking about animals that feed on plantain peels. Be specific. Snails, catfish. Instead of me to say fish, you say what? Catfish, rabbits. Do it's of you to say poultry bed, don't say poultry bed, you mentioned be specified the bed, chicken. Then another one is what? Is pig. Pig feed on it in low quantity. So if you are mentioning the examples, make sure that I make pig the last example to mention. Then the last specimen there is what? Ear tag. What is ear tag? Ear tag is a mix of identifying animals. They are attached to the ear of animals. Mostly they use it with what? All these mammals. So what is the description of ear tag depending on whichever ear tag you are giving to you in the exam that is the way you describe the ear tag but mostly ear tag it is what it is a plastic or metal object used in identification of domestic livestock and other animals so numbers or digits can be inscribed on it so you can put a number on the ear tag and you put it on the ear of the animal just to differentiate this animal from Order. So that is the function of ear tag. Examples of animals you can use ear tag, which is what is cattle, goat, sheep, etc. So what are the functions of this ear tag? This ear tag is used to separate sick animals from recovering animals, or to separate the sick animal from what from healthy animals, or it's used to separate lactating animals from non-lactating animals. They can also use it in um, cattle farm to separate animals that are producing milk from those that are not producing milk. So that's what we call what, lactating animals. Animals that are producing milk. Other animal identification means, what are the other ways you can use to identify animals apart from ear tag? We have ear punching, we have ear notching, we have skin branding. Skin branding, they will, brand, they will put a number on the skin, maybe like a tattoo. They will brand the skin of the animal. Then another means of identification of animal is number tagging. Another one is ear tattooing. They will put tattoo on the ear. Then another one is what? Poultry leg bands. You know in the poultry they will put some bands on some animal. They will put red red bands on their leg. Why some can be of different color. So those are means of identifying what? Poultry beds. So at the end of this video, I believe that you would have been able to get one or two things from me in respect to this Waek animal husbandry practical specimen please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for more educative videos and updates so thank you very much if at all you are interested in subscribing for animal husbandry practical examination questions and answer please don't hesitate to message me on 0903-234-7323 so make sure you message me on whatsapp only I'm only available on WhatsApp. You can also message me via text message too. I reply. So payment for white animal body practical is 1000 naira. So make sure you make your payments. You message me on WhatsApp and you make payment for your animal body practical questions and answers. Questions and answers will be available two to three hours before the examination scheduled time. So thank you for listening and watching this video. God bless you in your examination. I wish you all success. Either you subscribe or you don't subscribe. For my examination assistance, I wish you success in the examination. Please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's very, very important. And thanks for watching. I remain exam bonus. Our website is also available www.examboner.com. Thanks for watching once more time.